Hey everybody, welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake, and today we're going to build a collapsible beach chair. Ah. All right, so fun part about this design is, well, today we're going to focus on the fact that it's entirely done on tool. A couple of fun features about it is, whoa, is it slips together, folds away nicely, like so. You can take it on your adventures with you and stows away nicely. Now, this is all based off of stock that we've milled down to certain dimensions, but it's completely flexible because we're doing it on tool. We can adapt whether our material thickness is different or we want to make it taller, uh, the seat longer, whatever it is. I'm going to coach you through today just how to do that all on tool. Um, I want to take a moment to welcome anybody that is not currently a customer, maybe seeing us for the first time. This is Shaper Origin. It is a easy to use handheld CNC machine that is a lot of fun to use. And I'm going to show you a couple of quick and easy applications uh, of it today. So what else do we got? I'm going to get this out of the way momentarily. And we're going to bring in our stock. So working with three quarter inch thick cherry today. And one of the main tricks that I'm using uh, is the eighth inch roundover trick. So all of my seat slats and everything have this eighth inch roundover. So any shape that I make using my quarter inch cutter, this is going to fit into beautifully. So let's start by breaking this chair into two dimensional parts on the whiteboard. And this is kind of how I think about things when you know, I start with a sketch. Actually, we can pull up that sketch really quick. I knew I wanted a chair that slipped together, something kind of campy vibe. Um, didn't know how it's going to do the back yet, but I knew I wanted to keep it quick and easy, a uh, short weekend project. So didn't want to get too crazy on the joinery. So we went for these uh, dados essentially through that a um, that a radius piece of stock would fit into perfectly. So I have my three dimensional sketch. How do I take that and move into this two dimensional world that I'm going to be designing with on origin? Well, start off with our stock. We'll start with the back piece. We have that three quarter cherry and I'm deciding on Two and, a half, two and a half inches for the actual, for the back and the seat material, two and a half inches wide. That felt pretty, it felt beefy enough, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the chair feels certainly sturdy enough for me, but if you wanted to make that thicker, say inch thick stock, or maybe slightly more delicate, if you wanted to shrink it down for a kid, possibly, um, you can do all those things. You just have to consider weight and, and how all the forces are at play. But let's talk about how we're getting all those details, especially that kind of top rounded details, like a full, full round. It looks very similar to that. All this is going to be done using Ontool CAD, making rectangles and uh, rounded rectangles and placing them in a specific location, which just got significantly easier with position. So now instead of dragging the tool, you just tell it exactly where you want this rectangle to be on your XY grid and it will snap directly to that. Okay, so our slat position or our slat pieces are two inches wide, two inches by 17 long. So my rectangle that I'm making is three quarters of an inch tall by two inches. That first one, so I'll just draw that up here. That's the first shape I'm making, 0.75 by 2. Now, I have a little cheat sheet over here because I drew it on a post-it. I know I also want my curve there. And this is the top of my chair, and this is the bottom foot of my chair. I need one cross support here. And I'm going to use that shape 
placing it using that center anchor point. And I'll place that at two inches, two inches from my top. Same thing on the bottom. In this case, I have a grid that is set up on this corner. And on this case, I'll have a grid that's set up on this corner. But as I'll go into later, I'm only going to make one grid and just use the same reference points as I go through the project. So I'll be flipping on the workstation using the same alignment edge. And as long as everything's the same size, I don't need to worry about it. Next one, we have same shape that three quarter by two inch rectangle. And that's centered at five inches and one more at nine inches. I'm sorry, that's 4.5, nine inches. All right, so it may seem a little difficult on a drawing, but once we get into, oh, once we get in onto origin, it'll all kind of make a little bit more sense. That's our back. For our seat, we're doing the same thing. We have our stock. We have our, our rounds. This time they're on the same side. And for the seat slats, we're making the same shape, which in this case is a three quarter, so 0.75 by 1.5 inch square. I made it a little bit smaller for the seat slats. Placing it, copying it, moving it two inches, copying it, moving two inches, copying it, so, so on and so forth. So I'm using that same shape just over and over, just copy and pasting and literally using the on tool calculator to plus two inches to the position, scoots it over and I keep, keep carrying on. The last detail is a little cutaway so that it all f slips together and stores away nicely. And that is going to be six inches by 1.5. And that is 3.5 inches from my edge. All right, let's get out of the, let's get off of the whiteboard and onto the tool. I'm going to set up my workstation using the shelf, which allows me to very quickly, what, regardless of the thickness of my material, allows me to raise it up so that it's perfectly in plane with my tape surface. Now I could do this on maybe a tape board, because for my particular use case, I'm just going to be doing one side, flip and cut the other side. If I wanted to do it all in one shot, maybe I'd make a tape board uh, that was out in front of me that was the same thickness of my material, and I could cut both ends. But for right now, I'm going to use workstation and a little bit of do double sided tape. Just a little on the ends. Right. Now my alignment part of the situation here is going to be, I'm going to align my edge of my material right up with the edge of my shelf. As long as that's flush right here. And I'm, oop, before I do that, I got to lower this. Just notice that. Because I am going to be cutting into the area behind, so I would like to put a spoil board just down to that second position. There we go. Now I can slip in a spoil board. And dial that in. All right. Now we're ready. 
double sided tape down. Bring it up a hair more. As long as I'm pressed firmly forward and aligned to that edge, I'm good to go. Now for this first one, I want to be extra cautious and make sure I'm getting everything nice and tight because I'm only making one grid and that's it. One grid, one scan, and just replacing my material from then on out. All right, so next is my height. I want to set. So using my support board, my support bar. I actually, I'm using wrong size spoil board. So I want to grab a new one of these. One moment. All right. There we go. Now we're going to zero out our height by just bringing that up flush and locking it down. Boom. So my grid points are going to be right off the front face and along that left edge. And pretty much everything's going to be based off of this this origin point right here. So let's scan in our material. Really just focus, I don't have to get my, the entire piece of wood in my scan, I'm just, just care about what's in front of me on the workstation and create that new grid. Now it doesn't necessarily matter what size your grid is because we're going to be using position to place everything. A one, a two, and three. All right, let's start making shapes and placing them to make our back, back piece. In our Create tab, we will be starting off with a two inch wide by 0.75 inch tall rectangle and I'm going to use that middle anchor point. I'm using that middle anchor point because I want it to basically cut the edge of my material in half like that. I'm just going halfway down and a lot of the features on this chair are to kind of move forward with that a uh, little bit campy vibe. Uh, the protruding joinery uh, the exposed hardware and the, the green webbing as well. By the way, that green webbing is actually from our stock chair build and we had some left over so we decided why not let's go ahead and use that on the back of this. But the, also the fun part about this design is you can really use whatever you want. However you want to make the backrest of this chair, whether it be webbing or some sort of weave or at additional wooden slats, you can use these same techniques to do that as well. All right. So using our position tab, we're going to start off by placing our X axis at 2.5 and our Y axis at 2. So I didn't move my origin. That just moved for me. So that's the beauty of that. Boom, that one's placed. That's ready to go. Now let's make that large radius. And we're gonna do a little bit of math. So my height is really the most important part of 
my material is two and a half inches wide. Let's, let's double that. The width doesn't really matter. Let's just say it's 10. And our radius is 2.5. See what that gives me? It's just a fully rounded slot. And I want that right there on the front. See what that's doing? It's giving me a nice curve all the way through. Place that right there. And make sure you set this particular one to an outside cut. And that one's an inside cut. All right, step one of this is done. We can go ahead and start cutting it. Grab my glasses. And what's nice about this too is once this set up, I have two sides that I need to cut. I'm going to cut this and just place the next one. I don't have to go through that whole process again. It's done. It's ready. So I'll cut this and we'll move on to the next one. As always, I'm starting off with a rough offset of 0.02. All right, step one done. Only thing I'm going to do is test fit. So I have my two inch wide uh, across support pieces. And given that I just made that rectangle at two inches wide, I imagine I'll want to open it up just a hair. And I am right. So again, I'm talking negative three thousandths because you'll put you'll take away negative three thousandths of an inch from both sides. And I want this to be a friction fit chair. It's you could use glue, but I chose to just use friction and hardware um, in case down the road I ever need to take it apart. So take that negative 0 0.003 and just do it to this notch right here. Much better. I'm happy with that. And now I know what my offset can be for the rest of the chair. All right, time to do the next side. Pop that off, flip it end over end, 
and we'll work on this side. All right, let's start with a little double-sided tape. For those of you unfamiliar with the double-sided tape, I encourage you to buy some because it's wonderful. We sell it on our store. And there's a reason we sell it on our store because we believe in it. We've been using it for a long time. All righty. Make sure your surface is nice and clean. Again, pressing firmly up against that spoil board, aligning it with our edge, and making sure there's plenty of pressure pressing that double-sided tape down. Cool. Only thing I'm gonna worry about is clearing my workspace up a little bit. I don't need this there now, so I can remove that. I can remove that. All right, same dealio. First one is two inches wide by 0.75. Using that middle anchor and positioning it at, in this case, oops, our Y is at zero which will get me right along that bottom edge. And our X is at 4.5. Copy that shape. Back to position. Instead of zero, we'll do 2.5 and nine. Place. And again, for that large radius, we said that was 10 by 5 by 2.5. Now, in this case, I want the rate, uh, I, aesthetically, I want the radius to go the other direction. So, different anchor point. Now you can see, of course, you can always move origin to position your shape as well. But sometimes when you're doing precise layout, it's easier to just type it in and it snaps to exactly where you need it to be. That is going to be an outside cut and everything else is an inside cut. Right on. I get cracking at these. That will be our first part done.
second part done. And we have our chair back. Decided to take that negative offset away because I like that friction fit at zero. Maybe I cut these pieces ever so slightly under two inches when I was on the table saw. All right, second part is our seat, which has that stepped, uh, stepped cut for the seat slats. Again, double set tape. And one thing I'd like to point out on the seat port or on the back portion, the really vital area is right here. It doesn't matter where you necessarily place this, although you want to spread out your uh, your supports as much as you can. You want some support up there where your head's going to be. But what's important here is that the distance between these two slats is actually sorry is two and a half inches. So as long as those slats are two and a half inches apart from each other, this could be really anywhere you want. And as you change those degrees, the you change basically the pitch of the chair. Now the way I've laid it out here, I think kind of puts you in a relaxed but still attentive position. Uh, perfect for sitting by the fire, whatever it may be. But if you want to mess with that, by all means, just change where those where those cross pieces are gonna are gonna be. All right. Again, don't need to worry about redoing my grid or anything because all my material is the same dimension. Got two and a half inches wide. Just need to clean up my workspace. All right, I can actually go ahead and leave this detail because I'm going to use it again, but I need to get rid of this. And at any point, if I just want to have a better idea of what I'm looking at, I can zoom out. Makes this process a lot, a lot easier. All right, back into that Create tab, we are going to make a one and a half inch rectangle 5.75 using that middle center anchor. And we're going to start it off right here in the front and work our way down. Boom. Copy. Position 2. Copy position plus two plus two. I'm going to do six of these total. Whoops. And one more. There we go. Now you may notice I'm not bothering uh, putting a corner radius on these pieces because my my cutter itself at a quarter inch is going to leave behind a radius on its own, an eighth inch radius, in fact. So I know that, so I don't need to worry about actually adding it into my shapes. Okie dokie. Ready to start cutting?
right, there is our seat slat. All right. So I decided to go the zero inch offset again because I'm looking for that nice tight friction fit and that was going to get it to me. So for the last and final piece, again, we're just going to flip it one more time. Uh, this side, the curve, go, the outside radius goes the same direction, but we are going to make that little cutout as well so that the two pieces fit together and it's final assembly. Clear that cut history and clean some of this up. Now, same thing, if you wanted to make this seat deeper, add more slats, you absolutely could. Just start with your stock a little bit longer and say I have six slats going on here you could do a seven or eight um, just simply by adding more rectangles all right for our cutout we said that was six inches by inch and a half six by 1.5 and we will give this one a radius let's say let's make it a full full round so 0.75 slot and that is right on the bottom edge at 3.5 inches voila There we go. All right, home stretch. Last thing to cut, and then we can assemble. Again, with that rough offset of 0.02, I'm going to do my depth cuts and come in with my finish cut after.
And that is it. So, just so you weren't watching me cut all day long, I went ahead and did the opposing sides. So now I have my two pieces, my two seats, and my two backs. What do you say we start assembling? Now, a couple tricks to the assembly phase. Since I used webbing, uh, well, first of all, you're going to start with the back, assemble the back completely, because that is your uh, maximum dimension, and then you can want to fit that seat inside of it. And there's a little bit of a gap technique that I'll that I'll talk about when we're doing that. But let's start with the back. All right. Now for my for my cross pieces, I did radius every single edge, including this top edge. But I left this one crisp because that's the one that's sitting. And, and I decided to have it flush up against the outside edge. So I want that to be a crisp edge and meets that crisp edge. For my seat slats, I rounded over everything because there's actually a little bit of overhang. So I want it to all be nice and soft. And I can already tell I'm going to need my handy dandy mallet because it wouldn't be a session. I didn't bring the mallet out. So let me grab that. I find I've just I love how that fits together. And it's so simple. Next one down here. Right for the other side. Make sure you're on a nice flat surface to get everything level. And now what I decided to do is throw screws right there. Uh, you could glue it instead and not use any screws at all. That's totally fine. I said as long as your joint is nice and tight, it's going to be plenty strong. Um, it is a, a cross grain, cross grain joint. All right. Now, for doing the seat slats. What I actually was doing, position your pieces inside that frame and use that as your determining width when you put your seats in, your seat pieces in. Now, because in the final design, we decided to have the webbing wrap around. I knew I needed to count for that thickness on the inside. So what I did, I took two pieces of that webbing and put it in between my, uh, my seat pieces and my back pieces right here, in between here, and clamped down. 
Now what that allowed me to do was have a little bit of play and also account for the webbing thickness as it came together in its storage position. But for right now we'll just keep it as is since we're not going to weave this particular one. And we're going to put the seat slats in. And everything is, everything is designed to kind of max out at this final dimension. Uh, so the support slats here are 17 inches, and the seat slats are also 17 inches. What's nice about that round over too is it just helps guide everything in really nicely when we're doing friction fits. And you really just want it snug because we're going to take it out of this clamped position to do kind of the final uh, final seating of it and of course drill in the screws. This is also going to keep everything nice and square. Make sure everything is flush. Right. There we go. You can drive these the rest of the way home. Beautiful. Now, have oh opportunity where I wish I had the extra hands. All right, there we go. Voila. <laughs> uh, next would be drilling the holes, giving it some pilot holes, attaching the hardware. I decided to go for screws with finish washers, which if I bring the finished version up here, adds a little bit to the uh, campy vibe, if you will. So a finish washer just gives it a raised but soft appearance. It feels a little bit like a canvas snap as well. So again, aesthetic choice more than anything else. You could countersink these by all means. Um, and <laughs> so, you can do this entire thing on Tool and customize it to be exactly the way you want. Or we will also be posting the finished design files on Shaper Hub. I'll get those up for you as soon as possible. Um, I would love to see folks in the community making this chair, taking pictures of it in its uh, live and in, in the environment. And thank you all for joining me today for this fun project build. Um, I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks for 
another shape recession. But for now, thank you and take care.